Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll be standing on existing protocol. Um, freedom of expression is one of the human rights we all subscribe to. And as mentioned before today, a free and independent press is critical to democracy. The role of the free press has become increasingly important in light of the disinformation campaigns that we've seen taking place, not least on the African continent, but of course also in light of the upcoming uh, general elections in Ghana in December. Ghana is one of Africa's most democratic countries. It's difficult to imagine democracy in Ghana without a free press. However, we all know the challenges which has faced the media and the journalists in Ghana in recent years, leading to a drop of 30 rankings on the World Media Press Freedom Index in 21, where Ghana declined from a 30th position to number 60. In the African ranking, Ghana fell from number three to number 13. I think everybody can agree that this development must be reversed. The Republic of Ghana is committed to press freedom through its 92 constitution, through the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, as well as the Treaty of ECOWAS. In addition, the government of Ghana did, during the Universal Periodic Review in the UN in 23, support the recommendation put forward that Ghana should develop a national action plan to prevent attacks on journalists and to promote media freedom. In other words, over the years, Ghana has strongly shown its commitment to press freedom. Developing this action plan would further strengthen this commitment. I was asked to put forward some lessons learned from Denmark. And um, Denmark has a very long tradition for press freedom. Freedom of expression was already established in the first constitution from 1849. And I think some of the lessons to be shared is that a very important aspect from Denmark is that press freedom is constantly being debated. We debate government's compliance with access to information law. And we constantly debate the willingness of our politician to give interviews versus uh, communicating through social media. We debate the boundaries, the boundaries between hate speech and freedom of speech. And at the same time, we also debate the quality of journalism and the media's obligation to behave in a professional and uh, responsible way. So the debate is constantly ongoing. This constant debate about press freedom is most likely contributing to why Denmark has managed to keep its high ranking in the World Press Freedom Index, where we came out as number two in 2024. The point I would like to make, and that may be easier said than done, is that the media houses, Ghana's Journalist Association and the Media Foundation for West Africa and the many other actors in the media landscape, you must insist on debating media freedom as well as the media's right to exist and operate freely. You, as the media, you have a voice. You can influence the debate. Civil society organization as well as other actors, including the private sector, must support the media. In this context, the action plan to protect journalists and the media is very useful, if not a critical instrument. The upcoming election makes this plan even more relevant and urgent. Against this background, the embassy will encourage all parties to enter into a dialogue with the government to develop this action plan, which can contribute to journalists reporting freely without fear, in accordance with all the commitments to media freedom undertaken by Ghana. I believe this dialogue we are having today is a very important platform to initiate this call for joint action. Thank you very much.